Hey, what is up guys? And today we're going to be talking about the Creality CR10 Mini printing flexible filament. Now, PLA works absolutely fine, but flexible filament, it needs a little modifications to get it to work just right. So let's get started. Now, this process took me about two days time to get this thing to print just fine on flexible filament. I did have a couple successful prints before, and um, but it still seemed like it's lacking its full potential. So some of the things that I had to do right out of the box was I did notice binding of the filament as it's going in to the uh, extruder. So when I took a closer look at the Bowden extruder there, uh, what I noticed was this is the, the this is the gear that comes with the default Creality. As you can tell, the teeth are really, really tiny. And uh, it, what I noticed is even with PLA, this would slip and I could see a bunch of pieces of the PLA filament and uh, the, the, the flexible filament would just slip like it's like, like this thing is greased or something. So I did have a Tivo Tarantula, which I really rarely use because it was such a pain to get going sometimes. Um, and I did find a separate gear with a lot better teeth as you can tell right there so that was one of the mods that i did and these you can get them for really cheap i'll have some link down below so this is i think is a mandatory mod Another thing what I had to do was create a spacer for the spring here. And um, I didn't create this, I got downloaded this from Thingiverse, but it won't fit. I had to use a hot air gun to get it to fit. And this adds extra tension on the spring to keep the filament pushed together close to that spacer and the gear so it doesn't slip also. So that's another thing I had to do. Also, I had to create a new adapter for the Bowden. Well, not create, print a new adapter for the Bowden an extruder to enable me to print flexible filament because if you don't do that then the flexible filament gets all over the place it just comes out it finds a place and it just wraps around the extruder part and it's just a really bad day and it'll keep doing that so I 3d printed the filament adapter uh, the flexible filament adapter and replaced it with the with the stock one that comes on the printer and also brought some of the tubing now this tubing they do provide you a lot of tubing also e extra tubing uh with the creality and i've cut this to 15 millimeters i stuck it in through the side and then i'm just i've cut it into like a little triangle now this method i saw it from a youtube video which i found was very useful however doing all of this i still had an issue what i found out to be happening was while the filament is getting pushed in all of a sudden, I would see my gear keep spinning, but the spacer on the other side would just not spin anymore. So I knew that the, my, 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 my filament wasn't going anywhere anymore. And it's causing it just, you know, basically kind of like a spring effect. All of my filament was being compressed in the tube, but not going anywhere. So I knew I had an issue of clogging possibly down by the nozzle or through the tube. So what I had to do is constantly push the, release the Bowden tube. And then all of a sudden I see all of my filament shoot back out towards the filament tray. And then it'll start pulling again. Yet again, it'll do that. And uh, that would cause under extrusion, as you can tell here. Now, I didn't have any tangling or anything. So uh, after a little bit more digging in, I noticed that, you know, everything seems to be perfect. So I just made sure my Teflon tube was in the nozzle area, like just hard, like just in as hard as possible. And uh, the issue still happened. So I just got the idea, okay, why don't I increase the temperature? Because that, that's the only logical reason that this is happening. So I increased the temperature. Now these, this is rated for 230. This is a flexible filament at 92A or 95A. And uh, the maximum temperature is 230 degrees. And that is the temperature that I was, I was printing on also around 30 millimeters uh, per second. But then I switched it down to 15 millimeters per second. I still had the same issue. I was still getting a lot of under extrusion as you can tell here, and it gives you poor layer adhesion. So I got the idea, okay, well my last step right now before I go doing anything dramatic, was to go ahead and increase the temperature, the maximum rated temperature of the filament by 10 degrees and seeing how well that worked. As you can tell here, this is before I did any of that. Uh, this was with the binding issue or the clogging up issue, if we should call it, when the, when, the, when the filament would get compressed inside the tube. So it turns out the filament wasn't being melted fast enough, thus a lot, that's why it was compressing. And once I have increased the temperature by 10 degrees, with all those mods, it's just started out printing perfect. Now you see some, some extra artifacts here and there, but this is from my tune and I could easily tune this out. Um, I actually, I, I started to print this, I saw the first five layers. I said it seems like it's good because it doesn't seem like the gear is binding anymore or the filament's getting caught anymore and I left the shop and I came back about an hour later and I found it flawless. I didn't I didn't play with the tune, I kept it as is, but what I did was I'm using slicer so I kept everything at 30 millimeters per second, I didn't want to go down to 15, uh, 6 perimeters and also what I did was I increased the extrusion multiplier to 1.2. Now I think I should have probably increased it a little bit more to around 1.3 1.4 but that's going to take a little bit of a uh, a couple more prints to get that that just right and i'll keep you guys updated if you guys are interested in this but flexible filament does work you need to do a little bit of modifications you might get away with using the default uh just the standard 
gear here but i to be honest i'd highly recommend you switch it over um if you've noticed your pla slipping also and um yeah this is really tiny gears look at the gears look at the teeth on this one that'll grip something this one barely grips anything so yeah th that's something that's uh that's that i would recommend you do and other than that everything else works absolutely flawless to be honest so overall do i recommend it well actually yes i do because i came from the tivo tarantula it's a lot cheaper it's around 200 bucks and i built that thing from zero um the building process w was really useful though i learned quite a lot so i didn't have any mistakes while building this one like make sure my end end stops were correct before booting it so i don't break anything but other than that it's it was really it was stupidly simple to set up i mean it was 10 times easier than a quadcopter to set up it was crazy uh just plug in a couple wires and um four or seven screws and and that's it you're just printing which is really nice so pla will print pretty good right out of the box however here i did i was having those issues before i did all the mods here uh this came out really nasty this is pla though but after a while you know once you get your tune just right and you know see what i noticed was always i had under extrusion so i kept increasing the extrusion multiplier but not always that it worked as you can tell we do have some you know some gaps in there that is from some sort of under extrusion that was before i replaced added the spacer for the spring and before i even did uh the the gear and also yeah that's that's all only two mods that it really needed there and you need to increase i think maybe just mine maybe the 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 temperature is kind of wrong or it needs an offset so when i print a little bit higher than what the filament's rated for i'm getting better results or maybe my filament just has a little bit of humidity in them. So I, I, I can't tell in that perspective. But increasing the temperature and adding these mods, I think it's it's a uh, it'll really improve the quality of your prints. And um, right now it's just a it's a print and forget machine. So I just set it up to print since the early morning while I'm doing all my videos and then I just you know throughout the day I just find things that are completed and which is really nice. I'm not having to babysit it. Well maybe to get a print like throughout a three hour print maybe a total time that I'm next to the printer of that is around seven minutes. You know, the first five minutes to make sure the couple layers are down and then just keep constantly just take a look at it, just see if everything's working great. And um, that's it, everything's been working great. I've only had a couple failed prints here, which is really nice. And they're not really failed too. They're just, um, just try to figure out what's really going on. I highly recommend you get something like this small to print. This is a PlayStation 4 thumb thumb stick thingies so yeah i, I found these and uh, they're tiny they print fast and i thought this would be great to print so i don't waste a lot of filament and get an idea of different settings till i get it just right so as you can tell here here this has had la poor layer adhesion because it had uh what is it called under extrusion here so not enough filament was coming out of the extruder there this one too i should have stopped this one as soon as i got to like right here but as you can tell here always the first couple layers were always perfect you know look at this these are absolutely perfect and the reason for that is it doesn't clog you know it melts it melts it melts but it keeps building up that filament in the tube and it keeps compresses it until it gets to a certain point and then then it just stops uh, it's just unable to push any more through and then it had to constantly release the tension and then the filament would just shoot back um and then it'll start going through again and it'll compress so all I had to do was increase the temperature after doing all these mods. But overall, um, the, the printer is absolutely phenomenal. I can tell you that. This is really nothing. It might sound like a lot, but you know, I didn't pay anything for any of these mods, basically. Uh, this one, you might have to pay like two bucks for or a dollar for. I don't know how much these cost. But other than that, you don't need anything else. They, the Creality, they provide you with the tube. You obviously do have the, the filament, so you can print that flexible filament adapter, which I'll have linked down below. And um, you should be good to go. It's really nice, really simple, and um, I'm loving it, and I'll do more update videos. I have a lot more things that I'm printing currently. For example, this one I've designed and printed, completed it, which is really good. This is for uh, <coughs> the Hollybro Copus, and it's for action cameras. also designed one for the Runcam 3S, and I'm also designing one for uh, the Runcam, uh, the GoPro, uh, just so I can have a nice... Uh, testing platform for action cameras and uh, you know for cheap and Chinese and, and you know, cheap Chinese ones and and other other good ones that are coming out so it'll be really nice this is like our FPV testing rig here on the channel so I really like that so yeah so let me know what you guys think you guys want me to do like a 3d printing Wednesday or something where I show you what I'm designing or what I've printed or um, or we could share ideas there I think that'd be pretty cool so let me know if you guys want to see that and uh, I can go ahead and do that because it's kind of interesting but I just don't know how to insert it into my type of content here and um, yeah I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one peace out